This is a rocket. Let's try launching it at full throttle. Oops. Rockets in KSP always seem to fall apart when they get relatively long. They'll wobble, and eventually they'll snap in half. However, in real rocketry, tall, slender rockets are the preferred design. SpaceX's Falcon 9, NASA's SLS, etc., etc., all use tall, skinny rockets that are very aerodynamic and do not have fins. Build them in KSP, and they'll fall apart without serious structural supports. Believe it or not, this isn't a problem with KSP's physics system. The aerodynamics and the part designs are good enough to recreate these rockets accurately in terms of the physics. The problem is caused entirely by the control system. The problem is KSP's vectoring system. It's most visible with SAS, but it's actually a problem with how control surfaces, engines, and inertial wheels are handled within the game's engine. I think it's fairly common knowledge that the game bases control influence around the center of mass of the craft. This is good because it means when you tell the craft to orient, when the engine decides which way it's going to go, it's going to base that around the center of mass for its rotation. So rather than an engine up here and then an engine down here orienting the same way, they will choose to orient in a way that will corkscrew the craft, which is what you asked for. The problem, however, comes with this fact. This rocket is straight. The plans for this rocket are straight. But when we fire the rocket, it is no longer straight. It is compressing and twisting in all sorts of directions from all the various forces. These forces, these, that means the position of an engine will change mid-flight. This is very visible if we take the rocket and launch it at much less thrust. You'll be able to see that the engines start to sway back and forth as the craft starts to bend unexpectedly. Most notably though, the root part is moving relative to the controlling parts. You can see this on the nav ball here. The nav ball is aligning with the root of the craft and, align and telling the engines to thrust relative to where the root of the craft is located. This is a diagram that I drew illustrating this problem. So this diagram shows what a rocket engine looks like in its design versus actuality. When you thrust, in the theoretical design, the thrust counters the, uh, is, the thrust is perfectly in line with the launching craft. Oh, there went the rocket. So when it thrusts, it only applies forward momentum, and when it tilts, it's applying that tilt relative to that vector line. However, when a rocket flexes, these lines are no longer directly they're no longer directly on top of one another. They end up becoming separated, and this means that when this engine thrusts, it will actually induce a, a rotation on this center mass that will accentuate this bend. Then any compensation it will attempt to do in KSP's engine will be a compensation for where this pod is, not for where the engine itself is. Meaning that it will try to rotate this pod this way when it needs to rotate this way, it, it, which means it will try to push itself this way to do it when it should be pushing itself this way to correct its own positioning. suggest as a solution to this that you should just add fins to your rocket. Now this will work but as seen in the diagram the only reason it works is because it adds forces to naturally straighten the rocket out. It doesn't it makes the craft very large and bulky however so you end up with a rocket with gigantic fins like these and it's not able to steer itself in the air as well. Real rockets don't use these for a very good reason. They're heavy, they're slow, and they don't need to exist. 
these engines are fully capable of steering our rocket correctly. They just don't because of how the physics system handles them. Here's the way I prefer to fix it. Observe. Same rocket, same design, same everything. So observe the same launch, same rocket design with one small change. Control from here on a docking port directly adjacent to the initial stage's engines. Full throttle, SAS on. The rocket ascends with absolutely no trouble whatsoever. When staging, simply select the next docking port. Here, one of the larger docking port seniors. Control from here before staging and keep going. No wobbling. Release. Control. Use your next control point. Launch. So, we can see that the problem is indeed based on where your control from location is and not based on any actual physics property within the game. Now, this is a workaround. It is not a final solution by any means. If you want to build a more complex design, like a very large plane, for example, and you don't want to have 5,000 different struts holding all the bits of wing exactly rigid, this won't work because controlling from one side of the wing will double the amount of bending problems in the other side and you can only control from one location at a time. The proper fix to this would be either a mod or a game patch that would make it so that when a part wants to adjust the orientation of the craft, it calculates its adjustment vector based on its actual position in flight and not based on its position in the craft's design. As a little bonus, I decided let's make a craft that is as long as skiddy as we can possibly think of. So we're going to use only 1.25 meter parts. So we go fuel tanks, maybe just a little one on the top here. Let's see, little swivel engine. Then we'll have structural separator just right here. Get one of these have, say, another swivel engine. That'll hold it up still, right? Throw another one of these on, but instead of the swivel engine, we'll throw on two more there, and one of the vector engines. These are really quite a bit more powerful than the other types. And then maybe another set of vectors. I just kind of freehanded this so I don't know if it'll actually be strong enough to handle lifting itself, but I think it's fair to say this is much longer and skinnier than the design we were using before, so it should be far more likely to wobble around like crazy. So let's try the fix. Throw on the docking port throw on the engine. Just moving that down a bit so we can actually get some vision on the docking port. Hard to control it with the vector engines because they have so much extra vertical space behind them. Next docking port. You'll know I don't have to make any changes to the staging to do this. I just kind of slap it on there. Those are really narrow. Let's see. And one more for right here. It's important to orient the docking ports facing upward because otherwise you'll end up inverting your nav ball. So, unless you want to just be okay with that. I'd recommend making sure they face upright. It doesn't change where they can attach. 
In theory, you can use a system where you use docking ports instead of separators, but that's usually not close to where you want to end up having the engine controls be, so it's not as effective of a solution. Alright. So let's try launching it. We'll do a before and after comparison of how these control with SAS on. Because with SAS off, the control system just doesn't activate at all, so your problem with the control system orientations doesn't apply. So with it off, it immediately starts bending and it'll snap off probably like right now. Well, next one. Whoop. There we go. Nice fiery explosion. So let's revert back to launch and try that again. Turn on SAS, but before we launch, we go down here. Control from here. Uh oh. <laughs> Almost lost the rocket. But you can see. Even though it was already bent halfway over, it's not dying. This is a really tall rocket and it's flexing quite a bit. Oh no. But it's not oscillating out of control. It's just having a hard time correcting for that initial tip. Whoa, no. <laughs> Here we go, here we go. Almost there. Now I'll switch over to the next one. Now I haven't reselected the next dock port yet, so this one still is very unstable. But if we control from here first, then we launch. Now it's rock solid. You can see just how much of a difference it makes really easily. Oh man, we're going real fast. So there you have it. Longest, skinniest rocket ever. Put some structural supports on it and it probably won't tip over when we launch. So, thanks for watching. And I hope you can use this information. If any modders or if squad wants to fix the problem, that would be great.